Hey guys, so here's our next video in this unit, which is measures of central tendency and range. So let's start with one of the ones that we're really um, familiar with, mean. What is mean? Well, mean is the arithmetic average of a set of data. It's most useful when data has no extreme values. So if you all remember this, the way we find mean is we add all the values in our data set, and then we divide by how many there are. So if you count those up, there are eight different data values here. Um, we're working off the set. Uh, it says these are students' grades in math class. And we're going to round to the nearest tenth if necessary. So when we add all these values up, we end up with 619. And we've got to divide that by 8. And we're rounding to the nearest tenth. I believe it comes out to 77 and... 375 thousandths, but remember, tenths place, one place behind the decimal. So I'm going to round that to an average or mean of 77 and 4 tenths. All right, let's take a look at the next measure of central tendency, which is median. Median is the middle of a set of data. It's most useful when the data has a few or has very few extreme values and there's no big gaps in the middle of the data. Remember for median, we put those orders in numerical, or we put the numbers in numerical order, least to greatest, and we want to find which number is in the middle of our data. Okay? And in this case, I have two numbers in the middle. I've got 84 and 85, and so I'm going to go ahead and just find the mean of those two numbers. So what I would do is 84 plus 85 and divide those by two since they're two numbers. Now, I'm not going to do the math. I can kind of reason through this, and I know that halfway between 84 and 85 would give me a median of 84 and 5 tenths. All right, let's go ahead and move on to mode. Mode is the number or numbers that occur most often. If no numbers occur, occur more than once, then there's no mode. It's most useful when the data has many identical numbers. So we're just looking for which one occurs the most often. And in this set of data, we've got 93 twice, and that's more often than any of the other numbers. So our mode is 93. All right, let's move on to range. And range is just the difference between the highest and lowest numbers. So the lowest number in this set of data is 20, the highest is 93, so we're just going to subtract 93 minus 20 to get a range of 73. All right, so for this student's grades, we've got a mean of 77 4 tenths, a median of 84 and 5 tenths, a mode of 93, and a range of 73. So if you had a choice of which measure to tell your parents was your grade, which would you choose and why? So I want you to take a little bit of time, think about that, think about how you would answer that question. Also, why do you think schools use the mean as your grade? All right, so many of you might have chosen the mode as the grade that you would tell your parents because you want your grade to look the best possible that it could. But is that realistic? Probably not. Now, I know that schools probably would use your mean because they want to consider every grade that you've done. You're going to be held responsible for any grade that you take, whether that's a really high one or a really low one. If I personally had to tell my parents I want to be a little realistic, so I'd probably choose the median because the median is a good middle point. And although I have that 20, which brings my mean down way low, the median is really more representative of those other seven grades that I have. All right, so if you would, go ahead, pause the video. If you'll flip over to the back of your notes, you've got a few questions to answer. Go ahead, come back then after you've done that so you can check your answers. All right, so in this example, uh, you should have calculated the mean by adding the values together, which was 93, and then dividing by how many uh, numbers are in the set, which is 6. And 93 divided by 6 gives us a mean of 15 and 5 tenths. Our median, we should have put them in order from least to greatest. 
found our middle number. In this case, we had two numbers in the middle, so we find the mean of those, adding them together and dividing by two to get a median of 17 and 5 tenths. Our mode is just the one that occurred the most often, which is 20 because it occurred three times in this set of data. And then the range is subtracting our highest value minus our lowest, and so 20 minus 6 gave us a range of 14. You are also supposed to answer the question, which measure best represents this data? Well, usually you're going to choose between your mean or your median. Okay? Here, um, either one of these could be a good option. Your mean um, is the true average considering all of our values, but if we notice, our median is a whole two years higher. Okay? So this one goat with a lifespan of six brought down that middle number or that mean down by two whole years. Okay? So when we're presenting this, do we want people to think that, okay, our animals live about 17 and a half years? Well, that's way off from this six years for their goat, just like the mode is way off from that goat. Okay? Or do we want them to think, um, truly, if you consider all values, here's how long these animals live. Your choice, you guys got to think about what do you want your data to portray. All right? All right, guys, so that concludes our video on measures of central tendency and range. Don't forget to complete your summary. And in your summary, you're supposed to be answering the question, how does an outlier affect measures of central tendency? And remember, outliers are those extreme values that are way off from the norm of the values in your data set.